Hey everybody, it is 2021. And we're starting off this year by continuing our hands series. We're talking about what is in our hands. We're talking about the things that God gives us, like our talents and gifts, and how we can use them. So, we're gonna start off by using a, a bit of a game show for Miss Lori, which I'm setting up right now. And then of course, after that, we'll be doing our story time. But before all that, I almost forgot, we're gonna do worship. So, I need everyone to stand up on your feet so we can worship God together.
and welcome to 2021. It is our first traditions time of the year, so let's make it good. I want you all up on your feet and I want to hear you really loud. Let's say our verse from Isaiah. Here we go. Lord, you are our father. We are the clay. You are the potter. Your hands made all of us. Isaiah 64, 8. So go ahead and keep practicing that. This is the second week. We have one more week to learn this verse. So keep on practicing it. I can't wait to hear it on Sunday. All right, all right, all right. So we are beginning my favorite game show, What is in Your Hand? I am your host, Caden Spillman, and I need a contestant from the audience. Is pick anyone, me, any, me, 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 anyone me. Oh, want to join pick, at all? Please, 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 please. Pick me, pick me. Okay, fine. <laughs> What's your name? My name's Lori. Okay, welcome to the show, Lori. So in this game, you first have to blindfold yourself. So go ahead and put that on. Okay. Why don't you? Thank you very much. Make sure she's not peeking. Keep an eye on her eyes. She's not allowed to see at all, but she can touch it, taste it, Listen, she has to figure out what I am handing her. I'm gonna give her a small object, and she has to tell what it is, but without looking. Are you ready? I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay, 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 just making sure. Now, bringing out our first object. Ooh, it's skinny. Mm-hmm. Ooh, definitely has a scent. Is it that stinky? Uh. Oh, doesn't taste good. Let me smell it again. Is is it a crayon? That, there we go. All right, that is one point for her. Good right. job. Now we're gonna bring out our next one. You're ready. Mm. Mm. Okay. What do you think of this? Well, it feels like paper. Like it's a little um, crinkly, right? You can hear uh -huh. it. Uh-huh. It's got something in it. Mm. I don't know. Am I able to taste it? All right, you can taste it. Ugh, it's paper. Yes, it is. Not edible. Um, how about a little bag of beans? <laughs> I'm afraid not. That oh, is one strike. Shoot. All right, you're gonna lose that point. All right. That was actually a packet of sugar to put in your oh, coffee. Oh, well, it would have been nice if I opened that and tasted it, huh? Well, we also didn't want to spill it all over the yeah, over the stage, okay. so I'm glad you didn't. Thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, so, our final one. Oh, it feels like plastic. Oh, I'm detecting a bill but a really huge head. I think, is this a rubber ducky? But the head's not right. Well, that is correct. It is a rubber ducky. But if you would like to take a look at it. Oh, it's Christmas ducky. It's a Christmas ducky. How sweet. I have a lot of leftover Christmas decorations from last season. Nice. Oh, you would have also gotten bonus points if you could have guessed what color the crayon was. Ah. But you didn't. It was red. I'm afraid not. <laughs> well, thank you for playing our game. So, that game, totally ridiculous. Super fun to play with anyone. But the reason why we brought it up today is because we're talking about, hey, what are the things that God puts in our hands, right? So, sometimes those things our, he gives to us uh, at our birth or that we learn them like our skills and talents, our gifts, right? And we'll probably talk about some of those later on. I have a couple yeah. gifts. I know you have a lot of gifts, yes. right? Everybody and does. Everyone does. Yes. And that's a spectacular thing, right? And learning how to use those to fulfill the dreams that we have in our heart, right? And being able to worship God through those gifts, right? One of my favorite things is I love drawing and painting, right? And we get to enjoy that like almost every week. We'll be able to enjoy that in a couple minutes. Yes. Right? And I get to help worship God as well as help like teach others through the through that skill. Yeah. Right? And that's just something that God just placed in my hands and I don't want to squander it. I don't want to just, you know. Waste it. Waste it. Right? I want to take advantage of it. So 
How about that? We'll be talking about our man Moses. So he's a pretty famous guy in the Bible. Everyone knows Moses. Everybody knows Moses. And he actually has a couple situations where God puts some very strange things in his hands. Mm -hmm. Or at one point, God changes his hand. It makes him really sickly and diseased. It's kind of gross. But in the other hand, he gives him a rod and it seems almost magical. It turns into yeah. a snake. It's miraculous, right? So those are some of the ways that God gave Moses uh, some gifts and put things in his hands. So are you going to use your talent with your hands and draw a picture? Of Moses' Moses's hands. Man. Nice. There we go. I can't wait to see it. Let's go to it. One day, Moses was out taking care of the sheep and making sure they were all right. He stumbled across a sight he'd never seen before, a bush that was on fire, but it didn't burn up. God called out to Moses and said to him, Moses, I've seen the trouble my people are in. They want to be free from being slaves in Egypt. It's not right. I want to free them and bring them into the promised land. I am sending you right to the Pharaoh. Moses said, but I've left Egypt and now you want me to go back? I can't do that. No one will listen to me. I will be with you, said God. What is that in your hand, Moses? A staff, Moses replied. Throw it on the ground, said God. Moses threw it on the ground, and as it hit the ground, it became a snake. Now pick it up by its tail. Moses picked it up, and it turned back into a staff right there in his hand. Then God said, put your right hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand into his cloak, and when he took it out, the skin was white with leprosy, a deadly disease. Moses put his hand back into his cloak, left it there for a moment, and it became well again. Then the Lord said, if they do not believe these two signs, take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground, and it will become blood right there on the ground. Moses was still nervous, but I cannot speak well. I don't think I am the right man for this job, he said. God promised Moses that he would be right there with him. Now go, and I will help you speak, and I will teach you what to say, God said to Moses. Moses left and went on to do exactly what God had told him to do. Moses kept doing the right thing and listened to God. Eventually, the Pharaoh freed the Israelites just as God said would happen. They left Egypt and were no longer slaves. Moses left Egypt behind and led the Israelites right to the Promised Land. It all started by using what was in Moses' hands. So I hope everyone enjoyed that. So how about we go over our three main points of the day? Oh, I love that. To see what we have learned today. Yeah, and you know, it's always great to be able to walk away from the lesson with a couple of reminder points when we're going through our week. Especially and if they're nice and short. Yeah, absolutely. Let's all right. Start. Our first one is the point that we've been talking about all day. What's in your hands? What it right? is, yeah. We talked about Moses and talked about how he wanted to, to go save Egypt, right? Or at least God called him to. Right. But he was scared. And he was just like, Lord, send someone else. I don't want to be that person. And then God said, hey, what's in your hands right now? And he looked, he had a, he had a, he had a rod, right. Yep. right? And he said, throw that rod on the ground, turn into a snake. And he used it as a miracle to like scare a lot of the Egyptian um, overlords and yeah. it, God uses what he has. He also said, hey, look, I also gave you the ability to lead. I gave you the ability to be my spokesperson. He made him into a unique leader, right? Yep. So we want to remember that God gives us all sorts of unique and special gifts, you know, and you can use them at all different times, right? And we all... And we, we don't need to have a magical staff no. in our hands. Hey, one of our one of our gifts could just be being a good friend, right? Any of us can do that, which is amazing, right? And Or a great brother. Mm -hmm. Great sister, great family member. Helpful. Helpful, right? Yeah. So any of us can use what we have in our hands. Yeah. Okay. So point two. You know, we can start out with something really small and it can lead to something really great. Okay. What do you mean? Okay. For example, a few years back, I started to run. Okay. Okay. Great. And then I started to run a little bit farther and a little bit farther and a little farther and eventually, I was in a race and ran a half marathon. Whoa! 13.2 okay. miles. Go, Lori. Right? Exactly. So it started out where I could barely run a mile, but then at the end, I could run 13.2 miles. But you wouldn't have been able to run 13 miles 
if you didn't start small and work your way exactly. up. Exactly. And it took practice and training and work and discipline mm -hmm. in order to achieve that. And so God doesn't always just work with just the big miracle, boom, right there, right? Right. He asks us to be disciplined and to work towards things and practice things like reading our Bibles and praying and um, following his word. And those things can take practice, which can lead to great things. Right. So. That leads to our final point. That's right. Number three, get to it. You can start using these gifts right now. You can start using these opportunities this today, right? Yep. So uh, there's a verse in Colossians that talks about that we should do things for the Lord and not for others. And what that's talking about is that whenever we are going out to serve other people, we're trying to do it because we should know God gave us those gifts, right? Or these opportunities. And we are worshiping by giving back, right? By serving others. And there's three great places you guys can start with that right now, right? The schools or your classmates that you know, you can do that in your family, mm -hmm. right? You can, you can be a great brother or sister, cousin, daughter, son, and with your friends, right? Everyone needs some good friends, especially right now. And it's awesome when you can come alongside them and support them. So those are all great opportunities to start using what God has given us. So for the first week in 2020, get to it. Find some way that you can bless somebody with the talents that you've been given. Sounds great. Hey, we'll see you all next week.